Well, for the next couple of weeks, I'm doing a short series in Acts chapter 20, just looking at Paul's farewell address to the Ephesian elders. And they really are key verses to dig into for us as God's church still today. They give instructions and tell us what are some of the gospel essentials, things that we need to keep central to make sure that we continue with the task that God has given us to make disciples and mature disciples. This first section I called Testify to the Truth. I do encourage you just to take time, go and read perhaps the whole of Acts 19 and 20. They'll just set some of the context for you and help you to understand what has been happening just before this section in Acts. One of the themes that was introduced in chapter 19, from verse 21 onwards, we see Paul has been collecting a financial gift for the Greek churches, and now he's on his way to Jerusalem to deliver this gift from the Greek churches to uh, the church in Jerusalem. If you haven't already done so, I encourage you just to pause this video and spend a bit of time praying. Ask God to help you to understand his word so that you might be able to teach it well to others. And I'm going to just show you, as I always do, just some of the key ideas that I've seen in this text. I think right at the heart of this section as we begin is just to see uh, this statement that Paul makes, which really just uh, puts the spotlight on what it means to testify to the truth. So Paul says, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. What is that task? The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. This is at the heart of the truth that we know and love and believe as God's people. And it is this truth that Paul had committed his life to make known. And in this section, Paul models just a couple of things. He shows us what it means to actually testify to this truth. Just to look briefly at uh, some of the structure. So verses 17, to 19 are a unit, verse 20 through to 21 are a unit, and then another unit there. In many ways, these two units are joined together and they are bracketed with this key statement, I have not hesitated. So you see, you know that I have not hesitated. And then on the other end, I have not hesitated. Um, or I have not shrunk back from declaring, as the ESV translates it. And so that those two verses just bracket that section. And then in the first section, the spotlight is on how Paul lived and served. And he says, you know. You know how I lived. You know how I served. Paul had been with these Ephesians for uh, about two years, then he had left them. Now he's, as we said, he's on his way to Jerusalem. He says, I'm going to Jerusalem. So he's on this journey. He comes to a place called Miletus, which is about 80 kilometers away from Ephesus. And he summons the Ephesian elders. He probably didn't want to go through Ephesus itself because he had been there for two years. So he would have been known by many there he would have known and he loved um, many of the people in that city and so if he had gone to Ephesus itself he may have been held up there for a long time so instead he sent for the Ephesian elders and he called them to join him at, at Miletus and then when they arrived he gives this speech that really forms the, the gospel essentials that he wanted them to remember. And this testifying to the truth was not only testifying by what he said, but also by how he lived. And so we see that it's testifying by life, and then in the second big section, testifying by lip, or with the words that he speaks. And so firstly, he says, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you. And in some ways, this is quite striking. He doesn't say, you know how I spoke, or you know what I taught, or you knew, you know the gospel that I told you about. He says, you know how I lived. Because the truth of this gospel, the good news of God's grace, had actually changed Paul. It had impacted the way he lived. It energized the way he did his ministry. So he says, you know how I lived. The whole time I was with 
then he says here, I served the Lord. Uh, this word for served here is the idea of serving as a slave. So he had served as a slave the Lord. He knew that it was the Lord Christ he was serving. And we're told that he did that with great humility. So the idea there is he was thinking of others rather than himself. He was self-sacrificial in his service and even to the point of tears. Gospel ministry um, opens us up to being hurt by people. It's difficult at times. But he served the Lord in this way with great humility and tears because he was walking in the footsteps of Jesus, his servant king. And that meant that he faced severe testing. So it was very difficult for him. Later on, he speaks of the reality of prison and hardship. His gospel ministry wasn't an easy thing for him. But he wanted them to remember that the way he lived was testifying to the truth. This truth of God's amazing grace impacted the way he lived. But the biggest section is talking about not just how he lived and the testimony of his life, but the testimony of his lip. Because the verbal proclamation of the gospel is vital. And we see a few things that he tells us about what he taught. So I've not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you. Then he says, I've taught about repentance and faith, that people must turn to God and repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus. The focus of this that he hasn't hesitated to preach is here this task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. That is in the spotlight. This really is uh, the central point of what Paul is saying in this section. He wanted the spotlight on God's grace. And then I've not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. So he starts here, I've not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful. He ends, I've not hesitated to proclaim the whole will of God or the whole counsel of God. And what he means by this is that he has preached all of God's word. Now, good questions to ask me as you look at this is, David, why did you say testify to the truth? Well, there's an important word that is repeated a few times. I have declared, the Holy Spirit warns, the task of testifying, and I declare to you today that I'm innocent. Now, that's all the same word. So it's, I have testified to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord. It says the Holy Spirit testifies to him that prison and hardships await. And then he says this task of testifying to the good news, therefore I testify. So that repetition, testify, 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 is what he is putting the spotlight on. Testifying is a legal term, it's giving evidence. And here he's giving evidence about the good news that has changed absolutely everything. In his life, his life had changed, but it had changed everything in history. And this was the evidence, the truth that needed to be testified about. It was truth concerning the good news of God's grace that really is in the spotlight here. And this was good news that he wanted to witness to right till the end. He says, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task. If you just zoom in for a moment on just verse 24 here, we say, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. Paul knew that his very life had been brought, bought at a great, great price. This good news of God's grace was only true of him because our Lord Jesus' blood was shed to pay for Paul's sins. And so he then says, I consider my life worth nothing to me because it's actually been paid for by the blood of Christ. And so Paul was willing to take risks, to do whatever was necessary to finish the race and complete the task that had been given to him. In chapter 9, when Paul was converted, Jesus said, he will be my witness. He will testify before the Gentiles and the kings and the rulers and the Jews. And so he says, I consider my life worth nothing to me. All I want to do, my only focus is to finish the race and complete the task. 
God has given me great work and I want to make sure that I finish it well. And that great work is this work of testifying to the good news of God's grace. He wants to testify to the truth. It is truth that is seen in his life because this truth changes a person. Paul was once the church destroyer and he became the church planter. He went around planting churches because he knew that people needed to hear the good news of God's grace. And here he was spending time with these Ephesian elders because he knew that they needed to be rooted in, grounded in the truth about God's grace. This truth needed to impact the elders' life. It needed to be what was heard on their lips. And Paul's goal was that the churches that these elders served would also have lives that were changed and impacted by this truth and lived in the light of it. And that all of the people in these churches would have lips that proclaimed this good news of God's grace. So Paul says, I haven't hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful. I haven't hesitated to proclaim to you the whole counsel of God, all of God's word. And that word finds its climax in the gospel of God's grace. It is good news that calls us to repent, to turn away from our sins, and to place our trust in our Lord Jesus. He is our only hope. This is the message that each of us needs to remember, and this is the message that our sad, sinful, dying world so desperately needs. And so that's why Paul could say, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task. I want to testify to the good news of God's grace. And Paul was passing on the baton to these elders. He says, you know, again, you know that I haven't hesitated to preach. I've preached anything that would be helpful to you. I've taught you publicly and from house to house. So this was an all of life thing. Um, preaching, teaching, declaring was all Paul's uh, training of these Ephesian elders and it was a day in day out thing it wasn't just the odd Sunday sermon he was with them daily teaching them from house to house and then he says now I know that none of you it's very personal are going to see him again and so in this last moment he says I declare to you that I'm innocent of the blood of any of you I have told you, I've not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful. I've declared the whole will of God, so I am innocent of your blood. He's saying, nobody's blood is going to be on my hands, because he has proclaimed to you, to these Ephesians, the whole will of God. And as we look at this, this testifying to the truth is a gospel essential for us. We need to be Christians, we need to be churches who are rooted and grounded in the good news of God's grace. And this truth of God's grace should so change us that it's seen in the way we live, it's heard in the way we speak, and that this good news of God's grace excites us and energizes us and motivates us to be a people who testify to this truth, both by the way we live, it needs to be seen that this truth has changed us, that Jesus has made a significant difference in our lives. And testifying to this truth needs to be heard on our lips. We should want all the world to know this good news of God's grace. It is the only hope for the world. And so you can see why this is a gospel essential. Testifying to the truth is not an optional extra for us as God's people. It is what we need to be about. The dying world around us desperately needs to know about Jesus. So as we think about this, we need to ask questions. Is my life testifying to this truth of God's grace? Are my lips testifying to the truth of God's grace? And this will increasingly be the case as we rejoice in the whole counsel of God, all of God's word to us, standing amazed at what God has done for us in Christ and wanting the world to know that. So as you dig into these few verses further, I pray that they will encourage you, that they will challenge you, that we will increasingly be people who declare, who testify 
that people must turn in repentance and faith, who testify that we have proclaimed the whole will of God. And in all of this, the central focus that we are testifying to the good news of God's grace, because that is what all scripture ultimately points to. That moment of grace where Jesus died on the cross to give us what we don't deserve, to pay for our sins so that we might belong to him. Well, God bless as you dig in further and as you teach this to others. May it thrill our hearts at what God has done for us and may our lives and lips testify to this truth right till the end.